I realize that this is not an overtly political channel, but I cannot, in good conscience, say nothing in response to the terrifying rhetoric conservatives are throwing at transgender people in my country. That being said, I'm not here to just proclaim that I don't like it, that's not how we do things here on this channel. I'm going to try and explain what I think these conservatives are saying, and why they're saying it, and then explain my position in relation to theirs. Not because I secretly agree with them, but because I absolutely hate it when people talk past each other and achieve nothing. In the wake of the recent Nashville school shooting on March 27, 2023, where this time it was a trans man holding the gun, some conservatives are now calling for the eradication of transgenderism, speaking of it as a dangerous ideology which is a threat to those who have it and to everyone around them. So it's pretty clear that St. Mark's Lutheran Church is no longer a Christian church. So what is it now? Well, it's a trans transgenderist church, one of many. Transgenderism is this country's priestess growing religion. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. It is all or nothing. If transgenderism is true, if men really can become women, then it's true for everybody of all ages. If it is false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. My question is, why do these conservatives want to eradicate transgenderism, and what does that mean to them? The crux of the issue is that these conservatives seem to think that being transgender is a social contagion, a kind of mass hysteria. They seem to believe that if a person behaves and thinks in ways which are more characteristic of the opposite sex, then this must be something the person was socially conditioned into, not something they were born with. On top of this, these conservatives seem to think that this kind of behavior and mindset is harmful, both to the individual and, occasionally, to the people around them. Perhaps as the afflicted person lashes out in frustration at the fact that they feel like the opposite sex, but are not. These conservatives seem to think that being transgender is just another maladaptive learned behavior, like gang activities, chasing instant gratification, or, dare I use the term, affluenza. Learned behaviors that society and the individual is better off without. In fact, as I was writing this script, good old Ben Shapiro tweeted out exactly this sentiment. He thinks that being transgender is, in his own words, a social contagion. This, I think, is why these conservatives want to eradicate transgenderism, and why they don't see this rhetoric as an attack on the people themselves. They think that being transgender is a harmful social contagion that anyone can get inside their head, like gang behavior or chasing instant gratification. This is also why they want to protect children from trans people. They think it's a social contagion. This is why they fight against drag queens and cross-dressers. They think it spreads the social contagion. These conservatives view drag shows the way I view anti-vaccination rallies. It's a super-spreader event. Now, in order to ensure that I'm not talking past these conservatives, I'm going to try and grant what I can about these two key elements of their position before I explain why I disagree with their conclusions. First, on the topic of harm, I think I have to grant that being transgender can cause personal distress. Even if a trans person never gets bullied or scorned for being trans, it's still very distressing to feel one way and yet look another way, and to have other people innocently treat you in a way that makes you recoil. I imagine it's very similar to what a very short person might feel when someone assumes they're a child and asks if they need help finding their mommy when they're out in public. It's not bullying, but it is very frustrating and demoralizing when it keeps happening, and I doubt that anyone would choose to live like this if they were given the explicit option. Second, on the topic of social contagion, I think I have to grant that a non-zero number of people think they are transgender when in fact they are not, whether by an honest mistake or because they've echo-chambered themselves into the idea. I mean, hell, I was on YouTube when Tumblrinas were calling themselves otherkin, for God's sake. These were young teenagers who seemed to have thought that they were animals trapped in human bodies. 
The world is a big place, and occasionally a person does socialize themselves into a false belief like this. The third thing I need to grant slash clarify is my own view about sex and gender. I would say that sex and gender are two different things. Sex is a biological classification which applies across the animal and plant kingdoms, not just to humans. And if gender means anything as distinct from sex, then gender would be a psychological classification, one which refers to the differing thoughts and behaviors which statistically cluster around males or females. Thus, I would have to agree that a person technically cannot change their biological sex. Males cannot become females, or vice versa. However, a person can certainly realize that their gender isn't what they thought it was, just like a person might realize that they have unmet social needs, or that they're actually autistic, or any number of psychological traits a person might discover about themselves during their lives. Okay, those are the only olive branches I can give. Now, let me explain why I think it is indefensible, and yes, I will go so far as to say, rhetorically genocidal, to call for the eradication of transgenderism. First, on the topic of harm, being transgender seems to be no more inherently harmful to the individual than being extremely short, or even just being ugly. Yes, it's distressing, because it makes interactions with other people complicated and frustrating. And yes, it would be better for the individual's mental health if they were not trans, or short, or ugly, or any number of things which make life hard. But you know what makes it a million times worse, to the point where these people actually kill themselves? Bullying coming from people like Tucker Carlson and Michael Knowles. It really is a self-fulfilling prophecy to say that it's horrible for a person to be transgender. As for the harm that a transgender person causes to others, it seems very difficult to demonstrate that trans people are uniquely threatening as a demographic. American conservatives are having a field day with the fact that, after thousands of mass shootings in this country, they now have a third or fourth data point to add to their tiny pile of shooters who had unusual gender ideas, while they ignore all the other massive piles of shooters who, for one thing, look like me, and for another thing, had access to powerful guns during a mental health crisis. Frankly, I think this is conservatives' way of killing two birds with one stone. They get to hate on trans people because those people are gross and weird, and they get to draw attention away from guns because guns are cool. Second, on the topic of socialization, well, that's the question about a lot of human behaviors, isn't it? Nature or nurture? On the topic of gender, I think we can frame this question by first looking at another unusual behavior, one which many more people used to think was a product of socialization, but which we now largely agree is mostly a product of nature, homosexuality. Many more people than today used to believe that being gay was a learned behavior, because it was really hard to imagine how nature could have given males and females the sexual attraction which is more characteristic of the opposite sex. Males are not supposed to be attracted to males. Females are supposed to be attracted to males. What is this female behavior doing in a male's brain? Or vice versa for male behavior in female brains? But nowadays, most people have come to agree that sexual attraction is predominantly innate rather than learned, whether a person is gay or not. When we turn to the topic of gender, that is, the differing patterns of thoughts and behaviors which cluster around males and females, it seems to me that the same basic story can be told. If a male exhibits thoughts and behaviors which are more characteristic of females, or vice versa, well, it certainly does seem like this must be a learned behavior, because it's hard to imagine how nature could have given these males and females the types of thoughts and behaviors, i.e. a gender identity, which are typically found in the opposite sex. But as with sexual attraction, we now know that many of these sex-correlated behaviors are indeed innate, not learned. When we study the ways in which males and females think and behave, we find many reliable differences across cultures, in newborn babies, and even in other animals. While it's certainly true that some sex-correlated behaviors are learned, such as dresses for women and snapbacks for men, it's fairly clear that the more fundamental differences in thoughts and behaviors between the sexes are innate, not learned. And this seems to be true whether a person is transgender or not, 
just as sexual attraction is largely innate whether a person is gay or not. While there certainly are learned elements in the mix, these behaviors appear to be fundamentally innate. Now, oddly enough, this is the same argument I've made against many feminists in the past, who vehemently insist that all of the differences between males' and females' thoughts and behaviors, that is, people's gender identities, are predominantly, if not entirely, learned behaviors. So if there's no such thing as a female or a male brain then, what's going on with differences that we see in people's behavior? So the differences we see in people's behavior are mostly a result of our environment and not our biology. Det är ett element av biologi och så följer samhället kultur, men du är bara på samhället kultur. Ja. Vad är på något sätt det vetenskapliga grundlaget ditt för att se si att biologi inte spelar någon roll när det gäller män och kvinnors olika yrkesval? Eh mitt vetenskapliga grundlag Jeg har, jeg har nok et ganske, det du ville kalle en daglig, veldig teoretisk utgangspunkt. Altså, biologi får liksom ikke plass der for mig. As I've argued just now, and in a previous video, I think this is demonstrably false. To a large extent, males and females really are born this way with respect to the average differences in their thoughts and behaviors. Unfortunately, the feminists I've argued against on this topic, who typically consider themselves to be strong allies of trans people, don't really have a leg to stand on when it comes to this half of conservatives' reasoning. When these conservatives want to treat trans people's gender identities as a social contagion, well, if all gender identities are the product of socialization, as many feminists have been arguing, then the conservatives are half right. Being transgender is a social contagion, apparently. This is a big reason why I felt compelled to make this video. I am in a position to tell these conservatives that they are wrong about both of their ideas. Being transgender is not the end of the world, and being transgender is not something you are liable to catch from drag shows or from trans people themselves. In my opinion, Feminists and conservatives are wrong when they treat gender identity as something people are being socialized into. Unfortunately, this idea is now being weaponized against trans people, and I hate to say I told you so, so I'll instead let the trans person I quoted in an older video make this point for me. If we could somehow know that gender is a social construct, who would this fact then benefit? It feels like claiming gender is a social construct could create the opportunity for others to jump in and say that transsexuality could be fixed or prevented. And that is exactly what these conservatives are trying to do. They think that being transgender is a harmful social contagion which can be fixed or prevented, no different from gang activities or chasing instant gratification, so they are perfectly comfortable calling for its eradication. In our pushback against this, we can of course cite the lack of evidence that trans people are inherently dangerous, but equally important is the fact that, dangerous or not, being transgender is not really a social contagion that people learn, any more than being gay is a social contagion that people learn. Which, to be fair, might happen, but it doesn't seem to be the dominant factor at all. That, I think, is a big part of why these conservatives are so up in arms about this issue, because they don't want themselves or their children to catch the trans, and I think we need to acknowledge that this is a key aspect of their motivation which can be debunked. This has been one of those videos which has something in it to upset everyone. I can only hope that my subscribers understand my irreverence for group opinions and recognize that I try my best to think through specific issues on their own merits. In this instance, it seems to me that both liberal feminists and American conservatives are factually and dangerously wrong.